Right, former Chiefs assistant coach Britt Reed now charged with driving while intoxicated. As first reported on KSHB.com, the felony charge stems from the February 4th crash on an entrance ramp to I-35 that seriously injured a five-year-old girl, leaving her with a traumatic brain injury. Reed is the son of head coach Andy Reed and was booked into jail before posting bond today. 41 Action News anchor Dia Wall joins us live. And Dia, we understand this charge could send Britt Reed to jail for up to seven years. Yeah, Caitlin, Kevin, that's right, because that's the maximum penalty allowed if he's convicted of this D-level felony. And hardly anyone I've talked to today is happy about this, including the Jackson County prosecutor, Jean Peters Baker. But she tells me this, again, is the most serious penalty that the facts of this case would allow. And speaking of the facts of the case, one thing our community still wants to know is, was Britt Reed drinking at team facilities? Here's what Peters Baker had to say. Do you know whether or not Britt Reed was drinking at Arrowhead Stadium at the complex? Um, that's that's a, a fine question. Um, what I can tell you based off the evidence that I have, while we don't have direct evidence of, of where Mr. Reed was drinking that day, we do have evidence that he was drinking. We have evidence through his own words as well that he were leaving the stadium um, and moments later this crash occurs. What are the next steps? Um, we'll be in a courtroom and, and working through this case like we do every other. So um, I think um, shortly, I think we'll be, we'll be in a courtroom on this particular case. Britt Reed's attorney did issue a statement this afternoon saying that his client voluntarily appeared before the court before he was released on bond. But going back to February and the whole start of this case, that crash back then, all those weeks ago, a GoFundMe page was set up by Ariel's family just to help with the medical costs. To date, it's raised more than $544,000. And the last update there was posted on March 27th saying that Ariel was still in the hospital, but she was doing well and making some progress. Today, Ariel's family attorney did make a statement saying that Ariel was released from the hospital on April 2nd. So some good news there, but it's not all good news, guys. At this point, Ariel can't walk by herself, can't talk. She can't even feed herself. What the family wanted was the most serious charge that could be filed, and the family got the most serious charge that could be filed. However, I will tell you, that no, no amount of punishment is ever going to make anyone happy about what the result is, and that is Ariel. And Ariel sustained and will endure a traumatic brain injury for the rest of her life. A reminder there of why this is such a big deal. I'm joined now by I-Team reporter Kat Reed, who spent the day really looking into this DWI charge, getting us the facts of the case. Kat, what did you learn from those charging documents? Well, Dia, first, as you mentioned, Britt Reed did self-surrender today, was booked into jail and bonded out. But aside from sharing that information, his attorney really didn't have anything else to say. However, we are learning more about what led up to this charge. So court documents show that Britt Reed's blood alcohol level was almost one and a half times the legal limit about two hours after the crash. However, there is an important distinction to point out here, and this gets a little confusing, so stick with me. That level came from a medical serum sample, not a whole blood sample and an expert we talked to explained a serum sample typically has an elevated BAC level. So a toxicologist is going to have to do the math to determine uh, a more accurate BAC level. A common defense in these cases is uh, that at the time of this blood draw, uh, that that was the peak of, of their um, BAC. Uh, so I would uh, anticipate that defense would be used in this case, that he was, uh, quote, on the way up uh, for his BAC. And Chris Mann, the attorney we spoke with, is not involved in this specific case, but he said typically in his experience, when you're talking about two hours after a crash, the blood alcohol level is typically on the decline at that point. He added in our conversation that 95% of these cases uh, or cases in general are resolved through a plea deal before they go to trial. Of course, it really remains what uh, remains to be seen what's going to happen in this case, Dia. Kat Reed looking into that DWI charge and the documents we received today. Kat, thanks for that. The Kansas City Chiefs organization did issue a statement as well. It reads in part that the organization has been 
steadfast in their concern for all impacted by this tragic accident. Our prayers are focused on Ariel's continued healing and recovery. The chiefs are regularly in contact with the family's designated representative during this challenging time. They're not the only ones weighing in today. The NFL released a statement saying that after the charge was announced, we have been closely monitoring all developments in the matter, which remains under the review of the league's personal conduct policy. Following the completion of legal proceedings, we will address this matter and take any appropriate action. Reed's next court date is set for May 27th. You can count on 41 Action News to keep you updated on each and every development, not only here on air, but on our website, KSHB.com. Live downtown, this is Dia Wall. We're going to send it back to you guys. Tough story all the way around. Dia, thank you.